So thanks, James, for introducing me. And thanks, everyone, for attending my thesis defense today. I'm honored to defend my thesis entitled Smart Tutoring Through Conversational Interfaces. My PhD work has been about educational technology, and it was inspired by Bloom's Two Sigma problem. In 1984, Bloom, one of the most influential educational psychologists, found that students who were tutored by a one-on-one -on -one expert tutor could achieve learning outcomes two standard deviations higher than students who were taught by traditional classroom methods. So Bloom's finding has excited many learning scientists and educational practitioners. However, one of the major limitations of one-on-one -on -one tutoring is that it's too expensive to scale up to the majority of the students. So computer-based tutoring systems have been suggested as a promising solution to simulate and eventually scale up one-on-one -on -one human tutoring experiences. For decades, research have been designing and building computer-based tutoring systems, such as the famous auto tutor as shown on the right here, which is an intelligent tutoring system that teach university students subjects such as computer literacy and physics. However, the prior work has their limitations. First, most of the existing computer tutors are designed as formal study tools in traditional classroom settings. In real life, People, especially adults, usually learn outside of school instructions. There hasn't been much study on how to design engaging tutoring software for people to use in their free time. Second, although people have started to try to make teaching personalized using techniques such as reinforcement learning, so far, no prior work has demonstrated an adaptive way of tutoring that can be applied at scale. Third, Human tutors usually learn from tutoring students. In fact, the tutors in the studies conducted by Bloom were highly trained expert tutors. The computer-based tutors we have today have limited self-improving capabilities. They cannot monitor students' learning trajectories and learning outcomes to adjust tutoring tactics to become more effective. Because of all these limitations of prior computer tutoring work, as Wenley summarized in his literature review work in 2011, tutoring researchers should retain Bloom's challenge and strive to develop computer tutors that are two standard devi deviations more effective than no tutoring. Moreover, when we look at current commercial solutions, even these solutions are limited. They primarily consist of learning activities with limited interactivity such as multiple choice questions, review and flip flashcards, and listen and repeat practices. These learning applications are typically not very engaging. And as a result, their effectiveness typically relies on learners' own desire to learn. And we know that there does exist a need to improve current education for both child learning and adult learning. Here are some supporting statistics. 71% of Americans think STEM education is better in other places. According to Department of Education, every year, 1.2 million students drop out of school. And lastly, more than 80% of learning happens in informal learning environments. Hence, the overarching goal of my dissertation work is to create effective and engaging computer-based tutoring systems that can be used in informal learning settings for both children and adults. How do we design such tutoring systems? We need to understand what are major factors separating performance of human tutors from computer tutors. Prior researchers found that they are feedback and scaffolding. Feedback refers to timely feedback when students make a mistake or become stuck. Scaffolding is an educational term. It refers to providing guided prompts to encourage students to move progressively towards stronger understanding of a problem. We know that human one-on-one -on -one tutors provide feedback and scaffolding through natural language conversations with students. What if computer tutors or chatbots did this too? Can the interaction between computer tutors and students 
enable better learning as well. Chatbots are computer programs that simulate conversations with humans, and they can be promising for informal learning for these reasons. First, natural language processing algorithms are becoming increasingly more sophisticated nowadays and ready to be applied to education. Second, conversational user interfaces are usually highly engaging. Third, according to the well-established ICAP framework, student learning usually increases as we move from passive learning to active learning, to constructive learning, and to interactive learning. This indicates that an interactive conversational UI might substantially increase student learning. Chatbots have other benefits when applied to education, according to many previous research studies. First, chatbot learning is a social endeavor, and chatbots can hold casual conversations with students and promote social interactions. The promoted social interactions, as a result, can promote students' question asking that might lead to improved engagement and learning. Second, chatbots can deliver instructions or feedback out of order based on students' current understanding and reactions, hence making teaching more adaptive. Third, researchers have shown that chatbots can help build students' rapport, and that helps enhance students' learning efforts and performance in mathematics. Fourth, Chatbots can create a student's sense of approval and autonomy when students receive feedback. Fifth, because natural language dialogues are highly engaging, they allow learners to actively construct knowledge when formulating responses. Based on all these potential benefits of chatbots and the limitations of prior computer tutoring work, here I present my thesis statement. Conversation-based tutoring systems that leverage new AI techniques to provide adaptive feedback can engage students more, motivate them to spend more time using the tutor, and improve student learning when compared to the current learning systems. I'm going to divide the rest of my presentation into four parts by presenting four different conversation-based tutoring systems. The first two systems are for adults to learn factual knowledge and English as a second language. The next two systems are for children to learn mathematics. The reason why I developed these four different systems is that I wanna show the efficacy of conversation-based tutoring systems across different age groups and for different subject areas. Now I'm gonna start with the first system, QuizBot, a dialogue-based adaptive learning system for adults to learn factual knowledge. This work was conducted in collaboration with my collaborators at Stanford and published at Kite 19. In real life, we often need to memorize a lot of factual knowledge, such as terms in science, vocabulary, and all kinds of rules. And people usually take time to memorize these things outside of a classroom setting. However, current electronic tools, such as flashcard apps, are passive and boring. So I want to provide better automated ways to help learners learn factual knowledge in a more engaging way. Therefore, I built QuizBot, a dialogue-based adaptive learning system for people to memorize factual knowledge on Facebook Messenger. Here are the key components of my QuizBot app. It has an interactive chat interface as shown on the right with an animated avatar which can provide positive feedback. QuizBot supports a mix of typing and button-based interactions to provide students with abilities to type their answers using keyboard and ask for hints and explanations using touchscreen buttons. I use a smooth inverse frequency SIF algorithm to convert, to convert students' typed answers to sentence embeddings so that we can compare them with correct answers. I also use an adaptive question sequencing algorithm to present items in an adaptive way based on each student's learning trajectory to maximize the learning outcomes for students. In QuizBot, 
I teach people factual knowledge in three areas, advanced English vocabulary, science, and safety rules. I chose these subjects because they're the important sub areas of factual knowledge that people usually learn in their daily lives. I hypothesize that this new conversational AI-based interaction can make factual knowledge learning more engaging and effective. To fairly evaluate QuizBot, I also built a flashcard learning app, which is based on popular flashcard apps today, such as Quizlet and StudyBlue. I carefully control the variables between the two systems. QuizBot and flashcard app share the same adaptive item sequencing algorithm same factual question pool, and same hints and explanations. The only independent variable between the two systems here is the interface. QuizBot has an interactive conversational interface, and the flashcard app has a tap, tap and flip interface. I want to answer these research questions through user studies. First, how engaging is QuizBot to learners in comparison to the traditional flashcard app? Second, when learners practice a fixed number of items, which app is more effective, QuizBot or the flashcard app? Next, given voluntary usage, which system is more effective? Here's how I designed my user study procedure. Students first came in to take a pretest to measure their pre prior knowledge. Then they started to use both apps for five days under different study specifications. On the last day, students first took a fill in the blank post test to measure their recall accuracy, followed by a multiple choice post test to measure their recognition accuracy. Under the user study procedure I described, I ran two user studies that each had an important difference in the conditions with two separate groups of participants. The first study was a within subject study where we fixed number of items practiced, aiming to measure the effectiveness of the two apps. The second study was an observation study where people use both apps voluntarily for any amount of time they wanted every day. This study was designed to measure people's engagement with the two apps. We recruited 70, 76 college students and alumni from 12 different US universities, including Stanford. These students came from over 20 different majors. In the first study, we had 23 female students and 17 male students with an average age of 23.5 uh, years old. In the second study, we had 15 females, 20 males, and one chose not to disclose. The average age here was 22.8 um, years old. Now I'm going to present the results we had from the first study. We found that given a fixed number of items practiced, with QuizBot, people recalled and recognized over 20% more correct answers. The difference here was statistically significant for both recall accuracy and recognition accuracy. This shows that QuizBot is more effective per number of questions practiced in comparison to the flashcard app. The results here are immediate post-test results after five-day learning period. We also perform delayed post-tests one week and two months after the study. And we found that although the gap between QuizBot and flashcards became, became smaller, the difference between the two was still significant at two months afterwards. Therefore, the learning improvement brought by QuizBot persisted over time. However, QuizBot had its own drawback, which is it took 3.2 times more time for people to learn with QuizBot than with a flashcard app when practicing the same amount items. With that, now I'm gonna present our second finding from the second study. People actually voluntarily spend 2.6 times more time with QuizBot than with a flashcard app of their own volition. The difference here in usage time was statistically significant. This shows that people found QuizBot more engaging and willing to use it more than the flashcard app. Because people voluntarily spend enough time on QuizBot, their recall performance was significantly better 
than when using the flashcard app, and their recognition performance was similar. On a scale of one to five, I also asked people to rate QuizBot and the flashcard app in terms of ease of use, fun, effectiveness, and efficiency. QuizBot was rated as significantly more fun and more effective than the flashcard app in both studies. QuizBot was rated on par with the flashcard app in terms of ease of use and efficiency in both studies. I also asked participants about their preferences between the two apps. More than 68% of users in both experiments like QuizBot, and more than 63 preferred using it for casual learning. But the percentage dropped when it came to preparation for exams, likely due to QuizBot's lower efficiency. To summarize, I designed, built, and evaluated QuizBot, a conversation-based learning system for factual knowledge learning that incorporated some of the latest progress in sentence embedding and space repetition algorithms. I found that compared to the traditional flashcard learning app, QuizBot helped learners recognize and recall more than 20% more correct answers than the flashcard app. Despite taking longer to learn with QuizBot, learners were much more engaged with QuizBot and willing to spend more time. As a result, this led to learners' improved learning on recall with QuizBot when usage was voluntary. Seeing the positive results of applying chatbots to factual knowledge learning, I now would like to shift my focus to a different subject, language learning, which is an extremely popular subject in adult learning and has been studied by, many, by numerous people. This work was conducted in collaboration with Future Labs in Tsinghua University in Beijing, and it will be published at IUI this year. Why is English learning such an important area in language learning? According to the British Council's report, English is currently studied by 1.5 billion people worldwide. This means that one out of every five people on the planet is an ESL learner. However, one-on-one -on -one tutors for language learning are usually inaccessible and expensive for most people. Although there exist some inexpensive self-study resources, these resources for speaking are primarily listen and repeat based. So can we replicate the effectiveness and engagement of QuizBot and apply what we learn to language learning? Another challenging aspect of applying chatbots to spoken language learning is that it requires voice-based interactions. I conclude that speech recognition today, powered by deep neural networks, is much faster and more accurate than traditional keyboard-based input methods. Based on a study I conducted in collaboration with Baidu and the University of Washington, this indicates that speech recognition nowadays is ready to enable more sophisticated voice-based interactions. With that, I built EnglishBot, a language learning chatbot that converses with students interactively on college-related topics. In EnglishBot, we use automatic speech recognition powered by deep learning. We provided adaptive feedback based on learners' natural language inputs. We also provided hints in learners' native language in case they needed them. Now I'm going to walk through each component of my English ball system. First, we have a learning material pane here, which is comprised of two sections, vocabulary and sentence structures, designed to assist users in completing the conversation with a chat ball. The conversation practice pin, shown on the right here, serves as a major learning window where most of the learning actions and interactions take place, as well as all conversations between the user and EnglishBot. EnglishBot's dialogue bubbles, indicated by the orange boxes, consist of chatbot utterances. The chatbot also comes with an audio play button, which is used to replace the audio of the English sentences and a translation button, which translates English sentences into Chinese. 
The user style of bubbles, indicated by the dark gray boxes here, contain the user's replies, adaptive feedback from English bot, a reference answer, which can be clicked by the user to display the reference answer, and an audio play button that reads the reference answer to the user. The next section, indicated by the orange box, is a hint bar containing hints in the user's native language. The bottom section, indicated by the two dark blue boxes here, is the operation panel where the user records, edits, and sends their replies to English bot prompts. 6A shows the first phase, prompting the user to speak out loud to record their response. The speech engine then transcribes user's responses to text. 6B shows the transcribed text. The user can click on the mic button to continue recording or edit the text field because speech recognition may not be 100% accurate. In fact, in our user study, the speech recognition engine achieved a 94.5% accuracy. Here's how the complete English bot interface looks like on a student's screen. There are already two exchanges of conversations. For example, the chatbot says here, you will never believe it, but my dog ate it. And then the user replies with, you must be kidding. And the feedback the student receives is fabulous. The current dialogue here is the fifth exchange. To compare English bot to more standard approaches, we implemented a traditional style listen repeat interface based on popular speaking English learning apps in China, such as Seven English and Little English. As shown here, this listen repeat interface was designed to have the same color scheme and layout as English bot. However, users cannot provide any conversational inputs to the system, which is the major constraint of the popular English learning apps nowadays. Hence, the only independent variable between the two systems is the conversational UI versus a traditional UI. Similar to QuizBot studies, we conducted two studies in two different learning scenarios, fixed usage and free usage. However, unlike QuizBot studies, where users use both apps at the same time, users were randomly assigned to one of the two systems and only used that system in their six day learning period so that we can trace people's spoken English improvement, improvement later to one of the two systems. Here's the user study procedure. Users first took a series of pre-tests before getting started, including a free form and a script-based speaking test. In the fixed usage study, users were asked to complete all conversations in one unit each day by following a strict order from beginning to end with no repetition. This study may mimic the use of English bot in a classroom setting. In the free usage study, users were given access to one unit each day and allowed to complete as many or as few conversations in the unit as they desired. This study examines the effectiveness of English bot in more real world conditions and may better simulate the use of such a system outside the traditional classroom settings, such as during self-study. We recruited 56 college students with an average age of 23.4 years old. These students came from 22 different universities and 30 different majors. Our native Chinese speakers, 45 of them had never been in English speaking countries before and 11 had only been abroad for short-term travel purposes only. During this average total time in English-speaking countries is 1.3 months. Similar to quiz bot studies, we want to answer the question about which system is more engaging. Given fixed usage, which system is more effective? And given voluntary usage, which system is more effective? Now I'm gonna present our results from the first study. First, we observed that there was no difference in user self-reported engagement scores between the two systems in the fixed usage, in the fixed usage setting. 
User speaking improvements were evaluated by speaking tests with graders. The grading was done across a, according to a grading rubric adapted from the out speaking test across four different metrics, fluency and coherency, coherence, lexical resources, grammatic range and accuracy, and pronunciation. Here, we found that there was no difference in speaking English improvement across any of the four met metrics between the two systems in the fixed usage setting. Moreover, English Bao took 2.5 times longer to practice the same, amount of, uh, the same amount of learning materials than the traditional system. So through this first study, the fixed usage study, we haven't found any benefits of using English of using English Bao to learn language. Now I'd like to move to our second study, the free usage study. First, we found that English Bot was more engaging than the flashcard app in the free usage setting, according to user self-reported engagement scores. Of their own volition, English Bot users spend 2.1 times more time than the traditional system users, and the difference was statistically significant with a large effect size. There was also a significant improvement in learning gains on the script-based fluency evaluation measure, but not on the rest. This is my speculation, but the results could have to do with the duration of our study. Our study was only operated over a short time span, and we know that language learning takes a lot of time to make progress. So this work suggests that more work might be needed to understand how to best create and use interactive chatbot technology to support efficient and effective foreign language learning in both fixed usage and free usage settings. To summarize, in this work, I built a voice-based chatbot that helps college students improve their spoken language and conducted user studies under two different conditions. And I found that English bot engages students more and motivates them to double the time spent in free usage settings. English Bot also improves student speaking fluency more in the free usage setting. However, in the fixed usage setting, English, English Bot achieves similar learning and engagement and is less efficient in comparison to the traditional system. Now I like to switch gears here and shift my focus on different population children. Designing learning solutions for children is even more important because children have shorter attention spans compared to adults and need more engaging methods so that we can cultivate their passion for learning. How many of us have remembered learning math in elementary school? Learning math is a really important phase of learning for young children. For the next two systems, I like to explore how to design engaging and effective children chatbots to support children's math learning. My systems for a child learning draw inspiration from a popular book here called The Diamond Age, where a young girl receives a book in the form of a tablet. The tablet weaves a story, embedding the girl protagonist in as a major character and through activities and narrative. This book gives a girl a complete education. She grows up to be an independent woman with a personalized education received from the smart book. I develop a learning system around this book by first implementing a narrative-based learning system with a Wizard of Oz chatbot, which means the chatbot was controlled by a human tutor instead of being fully automated. This work was conducted in collaboration with many collaborators and published at IDC last year. First, we'd like to review the impacts of narrative-based learning. Narratives have both count, pros and cons on learning. On the pro side, they can help develop students' mental models. They can also captivate students more and increase student immersion. When narratives are embedded in educational games, they can also deliver better learning outcomes. However, narrative-based learning has its own drawbacks. Sometimes narratives might distract students from learning. 
Narrative-based learning is usually, is usually less efficient compared to no narrative. And they might impede students' recall and problem-solving abilities, according to some previous research. So in my project, I want to first examine the effect of narrative on children's math learning. Does narrative actually improve engagement and effectiveness? Second, I want to add chatbots to narrative-based learning and test their combined impacts on child learning. Here are, here's the interface of the narrative-based learning system I designed and built and the key components. We, I provided a narrative-based learning experience for children on tablets. The narrative is personalized based on the child's context. I also embedded a multi-step math learning task into the narrative. And lastly, I provided feedback support through two ways, one a hint system and the other a Wizard of Oz tutoring chatbot. The hint system I implemented here can give feedback in a linear order. This is a design used in popular learning platforms nowadays, like Khan Academy. I also designed four different user study conditions. In the first study, students completed the educational task. In the second condition, condition B, students completed the same educational learning task, but embedded in a narrative. In the third condition, I added the hint system. And in the last system, in the last condition, the hint system was replaced with a worth chatbot. The major difference between condition C and condition D here is that hints came in linear orders and students could only see them one by one. In chatbot, however, the wizard could choose which hint they think most relevant to the student based on students' reactions, rather than sending them to the students in a preset order. Here are the interfaces of the four conditions. First, the task only condition. In the second condition, students first read the story, then they started to work on the same math problem. In the third condition, we provided a hint system as shown on the right side of the interface. And in the last condition, we had this interactive chat interface on the right. As I mentioned earlier, the chatbot was implemented using words technique, meaning the human tutor actually controlled the chatbot. Here we could see that this wizard hid in a private room and sent messages to the kid through a dashboard in real time. The wizard also had real time access to children's facial expressions and learning behavior through a camera. The wizard was allowed to perform four different types of actions she can have a small talk with kid, encouraging the kid, providing some direct hints, and lastly, checking children's understanding. For the math learning task, I designed it as a six step interactive math task for grades three to five children. The task involves three concepts here, multiplication, fraction, and volume. Here I'm showing you one of the steps we designed, step four. Given the measurement of height, length, and width, how many chocolates are there in the box? So this question aims to teach children measurement and data, operations and algebraic thinking. And the targeted grade levels here are four and five. We also map the question to the common core state standards. Lastly, number of hints here indicated the max number of hints students could obtain in conditions C and D through the hint system or the chatbot. To assess students' learning outcomes, participants took a math quiz right before and after their interaction with my tablet-based app. All questions were drawn from Khan Academy and Singapore math books with selection guided by the Common Core state standards. To limit learning effects from repeated measures, we utilized two versions of the quiz version A and version B, where the only difference was that numerical values in the problems were changed, and we counterbalanced administration of the two quizzes. 
We recruited 72 grade three to five children to take part in the study. 18 children were randomly assigned to each of the four systems. These 72 children were from 43 different schools in the Bay Area. 32 of them were in third grade, 24 in fourth grade, and 16 in fifth grade. Half were boys and half were girls. And we equally distributed them based on their grades and gender across the four conditions. So how did children react to these four systems? First, we found that narrative-based learning was more engaging than new narrative, which is consistent with um, previous literature findings. Then we found that narrative plus chatbot was also more engaging than no narrative. What surprises here is actually condition C, narrative plus hand condition. We didn't find children um, enjoyed more. We're not sure why. It's possible because the hints are not personalized for the children so that they have to read them in a linear order one by one. This might add a lot of actual cognitive load to the children. In terms of learning improvement, we found that kids in the narrative plus chatbot condition uh, learned more on the volume concept than kids in the control condition. Again, the results here that narrative plus hint does not help with learning surprises us. Although hints and chatbots cover the same content and information, relying on children to read the text is not an effective way of teaching as shown here. Instead, delivering hints in an adaptive order through a conversational interface is more effective. To test retention, we send out a follow-up test to all participants one month after their lab study. I plotted the percentage of children in each condition who solved each step of the virtual learning task. As indicated by the red line here, narrative plus chatbots improve retention. To summarize, I built a narrative-based learning system with four different conditions and conducted lab studies with 72 children. I found that narrative is more engaging, confirming the past literature findings. I also found that narrative with chatbot media feedback promotes engagement. Narrative with chatbot immediate feedback also enhances students' learning and retention. I didn't find any benefits of using a linearly ordered hint system. This might indicate that current learning platforms based on the popular linear hint design can potentially be improved. Now that I have obtained positive results from the narrative plus a worth chatbot, could we actually build a real automated chatbot? I want to see if I would get similar results with a real chatbot rather than a human wizard. Additionally, in the last study, the wizard had real-time access to children's facial expressions and learning behavior. So it was difficult to conclude how much of the effect effectiveness came from natural language tutoring. Now I'm going to present the last system I built which achieves the goal of automating the chatbot, chatbot and discuss what kind of results I received. This work was recently completed with the help of my many collaborators. The solution I adopted to build an automated chatbot was reinforcement learning. I used IL to determine what kind of message should be provided to students given their natural language inputs. The IR chatbot required zero training data and performed online learning. The policy we used was built using the proximal policy optimization algorithm. Here's the interaction uh, flow between the children and the IR chatbot. Children first came in and finished the pretest to measure their prior knowledge. Then they start, started to work on the math problem. In the problem solving stage, children could send a message to the chatbot then the chatbot will um, perform action selection to select the feedback to send back to the kid. Based on if the kid found the reply helpful or not, and um, if the reply was a hint or not, we send different reward signals to the chatbot. At the end of the problem solving stage, the kid um, either quitted the task or successfully solved the task. 
In either case, the kid uh, needed to uh, finish a post quiz and we use the student's improvement um, from post-test to pre-test as a reward. And lastly, if the kid quitted the task, uh, we send a big penalty to the chatbot. At the end of the interaction, the chatbot performed the update. Um, as we know in reinforcement learning, it's important to design the observation space, action space, and reward function. Now I'm gonna talk about each of them in detail. In the observation space, the chatbot has access to the children's grade, um, children's pre-score, um, which step of the six step task the kid is currently in, and how many times the kid has failed. Um, we also um, take children's natural language inputs and ex extract the positive sentiment based on automatic sentiment analysis tool. Uh, similarly, we extracted negative sentiment we also introduced something called help sentiment, which is basically the semantic similarity between the children's natural language input and asking for help. Lastly, we also give children a mass anxiety survey and measure their mass anxiety before they got started. So here um, in this observation space, children's grades, pre-score and mass, mass anxiety scores are static variables and the rest of the variables are affected by the actions the R chatbot takes during the interactions. Now I'd like to talk about the action space. Similar to the wizard in the last study, the RL tutoring chatbot could perform four actions. The first was guided prompts. For example, the chatbot says here, try thinking about the concept of volume to solve this problem. The second is a direct hint. For example, the chatbot can just send the equation, the formula of the volume to help the kid solve the problem. The chatbot can also send an encouraging message. And lastly, um, sometimes the chatbot might just acknowledge the receipt of the message from the kid instead of, instead of sending back any meaningful feedback. Here, the chatbot just sends back a smiley face. Now I'd like to talk about how um, the chatbot updates itself based on the reward. I divide this into two parts, during the interaction and after the interaction. During the interaction, when the child has not yet completed the task, we use a design from Basin et al's paper um, published last year, um, where if the reply sent by the chatbot was a hint, we give a small positive reward to the chatbot and we also recorded how many hints have been given so that we will penalize a total number of hints later. We also give a small positive reward uh, if the reply was marked as helpful by the child. At the end of the interaction, if the child solves the task, we took children's post to pre improvement and then deduct the total number of hints children received during the interaction um, multiplied by our parameter here as an um, ending reward. In this way, the chatbot can learn to give children some help, but not too much help. And if the kid quitted the task, we give a um, big penalty, minus eight here to the chatbot, so that it will learn um, how to avoid the kid from quitting next time. Um, based on the parameters chosen by Basin et al's paper and also our own simulation, uh, we chose these, these numbers for our hyperparameter. In the last study, um, our learning app was implemented on a tablet. Because of COVID this year, um, last year, we couldn't actually invite kids to our lab. So we did a migration here. Uh, we migrated our app from uh, the tablet to a desktop as a web learning app. Uh, similarly for the control system, we did the migration. As we can see here, the difference looks like this, looks the same. Um, we just changed the platform. So for the user study, we perform a large scale online study where 339 grade three to five kids participated. 70 were assigned to the control condition and 269 to the RL chatbot condition. We let our area chatbot perform batch update after every five kids. 
these 339 children um, were balanced in terms of grade, uh, in terms of gender and grade. And um, gender and grade were well balanced across the two conditions. So what is the takeaway from this study? Did we observe the same um, performance? First, I found that children who learned with a chatbot yielded higher learning gains than children learn who learned with a control. I also segmented children based on their prior knowledge, and I found that children with no or little prior knowledge benefited much more by interacting with a chatbot. Here was the effect size of 1.1. Children who came in with moderate to high prior knowledge still benefited um, by interacting with a chatbot just the effect size being smaller here, 0.3. Next, for the engagement, I found that children who learned with a chatbot were much more engaged than children who learned with a control. Similarly, I performed the segmentation and found that children with little or no prior knowledge were much more engaged when interacting with a chatbot with a large effect size, 1.6 here. For children who had more prior knowledge, they still enjoy the chatbot more uh, just with a smaller effect size, 0.2 here. Because our IL chatbot can improve over time, I also plot um, children's improvement over time and compare that to the static control. As we can see here, although fluctuating a lot, IL chatbot um, actually yielded higher improvement for students as shown, um, as, as shown by the purple lines here, and then the static control control show in the dash green line here over time. Um, then I plotted the reward of the RL agent. And as we can see here, it's very likely that our agent has not yet converged. So if we could um, run the study with more kids, the RL agent could probably converge to better results and yield better learning and engagement for children. I also found that there exists strong correlation between children's pre-score improvement and the RL reward. Since our data did not come from a bivariant normal distribution, I used Kendall rank correlation test to evaluate the association. And I found that between children's pre-score and RL reward, um, the correlation was significant with Tom being minus 0.4. Between children's pre-score and improvement, um, the tall here was uh, minus 0.5. And lastly, between reward and improvement, um, we notice a positive correlation here with child being 0.8. And this makes sense because our reward function was designed to maximize children's improvement. So one important takeaway from running this large scale online study is that we should probably better control the distribution of incoming children to make the IO algorithm converge faster to a greater result. Um, I also plotted um, the RL agent's action selection strategy over time. As you can see here, um, the RL agent constantly uh, involves its action selection strategy. Um, to give you a sense just how well the RL chatbot is able to achieve after about 200 rounds of iteration, I presented here a real conversation example. Uh, the kid here first said, let's keep thinking. The chatbot decided to give a direct hint. Then the kid replied with saying, okay. At this point, the chatbot realized um, the kid probably need a little bit more help. So the chatbot uh, just sent an indirect guide. After that, the kid solved the task. Um, the kid became excited and said, we got another one right. Um, the chatbot smiles back. And then the kid started to work on the next problem. The kid asked, do you think we should multiply or divide? Um, very interestingly, instead of giving any help, the chatbot actually just encouraged the kid by saying, uh, I think I have some ideas, but I won't spoil it. Just let me know if you need a hint. So it turns out that this is a smart teaching strategy because the kid actually solves the problem uh, without any help from the chatbot. The kid uh, got excited again and the chatbot smiled back. Um, so to summarize, by building this automated chatbot using reinforcement learning and embed into a narrative learning uh, system, I show that narrative-based learning with our chatbot can promote student engagement and learning outcomes. 
Children with no or little prior knowledge uh, especially benefited from the system with a large effect size. And children with medium to high prior knowledge benefited with a small effect size. To summarize my thesis um, contribution, I designed and built four different conversation-based tutoring systems using new AI techniques in different domains for different age groups and showed their effectiveness on promoting learners' engagement and learning outcomes. Today's learners need novel, engaging, and effective methods to cultivate their passion for learning. I showed that um, through my PhD dissertation work that conversational tutors may not only help engage students in non-formal learning, but also improve the educational outcomes of those activities. To learn more about my PhD work, you can visit this website listed here and also read all the papers I published before. All right, thank you. So we have maybe time for uh, a couple questions, either from folks on the panelists or uh, from folks in the audience. Um, we will end it right after two. Um, the one question that came from the audience was um, given, asking, how, given that the phrase vocabulary of chatbots is much more limited than humans, how do you make sure the chatbots aren't too repetitive in conversation? Um, how to make sure our chatbots are not too repetitive? Yeah, uh, that's a, uh, actually a very good question. So uh, we have two ways to address that. Uh, first, we just, um, so we make the design space really large. So I actually have great designers writing dialogues for us. So that's the first way. Uh, the second, so I just want to point out that the system we had are research prototypes and um, the user studies are usually rather short within a week. Um, so we ensure that users, you know, had access to uh, different conversations in that week. But if we long, run the user study longer, or um, you know, use the chatbot more like a real world application, I do think uh, you know people will find it a, a little bit boring, and limited. So that's a, probably the difference between um, my proof of concept system and a real world chatbot application. Yeah, I have a question. Um, Congratulations on having you know large numbers of participants in your studies, and also not just recruiting them from Stanford and Palo Alto. Um, that's a great idea to get a more diverse um, population. I wonder how representative they are. Did you include students with you know low socioeconomic backgrounds and you know more difficulties learning um, at you know? A representative level, or um, were um, yeah, in general, how representative are these students? Yeah, that's a very good question. So um, I have to admit that in the first study, the lab study, uh, because children had to come to our lab, most of them were from the Bay Area, so the uh, it's probably less represented. But for the second large scale online study, because we could um, you know recruit children all over the United States, we actually carefully controlled their uh, you know, say household income, you know, location, and even, you know, ethnicity groups, so that they are well represented. Um, yeah, we, we do have the, you know, the household income. I think that's um, kind of, you know, similar to the overall household income distribution in the United States, if that answers the question. And also, we, um, we plot um, children's prior knowledge. And we noticed that although um, a lot of them were in the same grade and of same age, the prior um, prior score you know varied a lot. So probably indicating that we have a representative sample of children. All right. Well, then, given that we're after two o'clock, I will end the recording here. Let's all thank Sherry one more time. <laughs> <laughs>